गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास नाइन सो वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड चैप्टर नंबर टेन दैट इज ग्रेविटेशन तो आई होप आप सबने चैप्टर रीड करा होगा और आप लोगों को समझ आया होगा आज हम चैप्टर को डीजी में करेंगे ठीक है जितना मैंने आपको चैप्टर रीड करवाया ओनली दैट इज़ इन योर सिलेबस अप टू फर्स्ट ठीक है तो आज हम डी में स्टार्ट करेंगे चैप्टर स्टार्टिंग विथ ग्रेविटेशन In order to move, objects require the application of force. But a ball, when released in mid-air, falls down to the ground. Similar to the motion of the ball, all things on the earth fall down to the ground. A skydiver. A fruit from a tree, even a cannonball fired from a cannon, is there any force that pulls things down to the earth? Scientists found out that two bodies left on their own with no external force get attracted towards each other. There is a force of attraction between any two things with mass. This force of attraction is called the force of gravitation. So, what is gravitation? What kind of force is gravitation? It is attractional force. Force of any attraction between two bodies is called gravitation. It is attractional force. Force of attraction between two bodies is called gravitation. Or gravitation. Sir Isaac Newton proposed that even the Earth exerts a gravitational pull on bodies close to it. In Earth's case, particularly, the gravitational pull is called gravity. It is gravity that pulls things down to the earth. If gravitational force exists between two bodies, then why don't the objects on Earth move towards each other? We now know that gravitation causes two bodies to be attracted to each other. Let us discuss the factors which determine the magnitude of this attractive force. The two spheres approach each other under their gravitational pull. Now, let's replace one of these spheres with a larger sphere. You can see that the smaller sphere is moving faster now. This is because the magnitude of the gravitational pull is larger. Let us compare and check again. More mass means that the magnitude of the gravitational force is larger. Now, let us find out if the distance between the bodies makes any difference. We place two bodies relatively close and observe their motion. Now, place the same spheres a little farther apart. Observe how this time the two spheres move slower than when they were placed together. See how the magnitude of the force is larger when the two bodies are closer. However, the force is smaller when they are far apart. Newton drew similar observations and proposed the universal law of gravitation. It states that any two bodies in the universe attract towards each other with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional. Okay, this we have written that force is directly proportional to the product of masses and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. <coughs> so it is also stating the same thing. Though masses have 
हैं जिनके बीच का डिस्टेंस d है तो एनी टू बॉडीज इन द यूनिवर्स अट्रैक्ट टूवर्ड्स ईच अदर कोई भी दो बॉडीज यूनिवर्स में एक दूसरे की तरफ अट्रैक्ट होंगी उनका फोर्स क्या होगा डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल होगा प्रोडक्ट ऑफ मासिस एंड इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द स्क्वायर ऑफ डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दैम जो इन दोनों के बीच का डिस्टेंस है उसके स्क्वायर के इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल होगा फोर्स और डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल होगा प्रोडक्ट ऑफ दीज टू मासिस इज इट क्लियर to the square of the distance between them the proportionality sign in the equation can be removed by introducing a constant of proportionality this constant is called the universal gravitational constant Being the universal gravitational constant, g has a fixed value and well-defined units. We know force is expressed in newtons, mass in kilograms, and distance in meters. These form the units of g. The value of g has been found to be 6.67259 into 10 to the power of minus 11 newtons meter square per kilogram square. There were some very important conclusions and deductions made from the universal law of gravitation. Scientists concluded. that the earth revolves around the sun under the sun's gravitational pull this was later extended to all the planets the law also helps prove that the moon revolves around the earth under earth's gravitational pull One of the important things that the law explained was the phenomenon of tides. Tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the moon over the oceanic waters on earth. Did you know that the universe, our galaxy, the sun, and even the earth have formed because of gravity? In the early universe, matter spread out after the big bang. This matter came together through gravity and formed the millions of stars and other celestial objects we see today. Can you think of a force similar to the force of gravitation? Clue Remember how the planets revolve around the sun. The centripetal force which comes into play when you swing a ball attached to a spring around you is similar to the force of gravitation. It's an inward pulling force. Scientists and space engineers use this to create artificial gravity in space stations to counter the ill effects of weightlessness. Gravitational force you may remember is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two bodies. Can you think of another example where quantities are inversely proportional? We have studied that resistances in a circuit reduce the amount of electric current in a circuit. So, more the resistance in a circuit, less the current. Thus, they are inversely proportional. Gravitation helped in understanding the revolution of the Earth and Moon, and it also explained tides. Can you think of another importance of gravitation? All the gases that make up the atmosphere are pulled towards the Earth and captured by Earth's atmosphere. This is another important feature of gravitation. Today, 
We have learned that gravitational force is exerted by all bodies with mass. It is directly proportional to the product of the masses of the bodies involved. It is also inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two bodies. The universal law of gravitation has helped explain many phenomena, including the revolution of the moon around the earth, that of earth itself around the sun, and tides. pulls objects down and hence they fall. Could these objects be accelerating as they fall down? Yes, things falling down towards the earth accelerate. As we proceed, we will learn more about this. The motion of objects under gravity is called freefall. For an object's motion to be a freefall, it must be influenced by no other force but gravity alone. The leaf in this case is falling under Earth's gravity. However, the air around it is also exerting a force which affects it. Hence, the motion of the leaf is not freefall. Did you know that the moon is in free fall too? However, the moon tangential speed and distance are just enough to keep it in orbit around the earth. Can you think of other things that are in free fall? Let us see if you can identify which animations are examples of freefall. Once you are done, click on Show All to see the answers. Good luck! In the first example, the fall of the parachutist is influenced by air. So, this fall is not free fall. In the first case, it is the not fall of the stone fall. on the moon is free fall, as there is no other force acting on the stone. The last scenario of the stone falling in water is not an example of free fall. Water, like air, exerts a force upon the objects in it. When an object moves under the influence of gravity, it starts to gain speed and speed. 